There's a fascinating figure in the Bible, but most people don't know who he is and why he is so significant, even though his story is found in all four Gospels. And this person's name is Malchus. Malchus is the servant of the high priest who had his ear cut off by one of the disciples as Jesus was getting arrested by Judas and uh, a band of soldiers. And why is this story even in the Bible, even though this was right before Jesus' arrest and crucifixion, a lot of people have not really uh, heard this story or know why it's, why it's there. And this goes back to the Last Supper, when Jesus is talking with his disciples, and he reminisces with them about sending them out two by two when he told them not to take anything with them, no bag, no money, or anything like that. And he asked them this question, when I sent you out to minister into the towns, did you lack anything, even though you didn't bring anything? And the disciples said, no. And he says something very interesting. He goes, well, now I tell you, take things with you. Bring a bag, bring a cloak, and actually get a sword. And he says, if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak to buy a sword. Isn't that amazing? Jesus is telling his disciples at the Last Supper to arm themselves with swords. And the disciples responded, well, we have two swords here. And Jesus goes, oh, that, that's enough. <laughs> and so uh, here they are, the disciples after they leave the Last Supper, armed with two swords, and Judas and a band of soldiers with clubs and swords come and uh, confront them. And Judas had already agreed to betray Jesus, and he tells the guards, the one who I kiss, that's the one you're supposed to arrest. And so Judas comes up, kisses Jesus, and then the guards arm themselves to get ready to arrest Jesus. But there is one disciple who, uh, actually the disciples ask a question, should we draw our swords? But before Jesus has time to answer them, one disciple takes out the sword and strikes Malchus on the ear and cuts off his ear. <laughs> and you wonder, uh, maybe he was going for his head, but he just missed. And Jesus rebukes this disciple and says, you know, put your sword away. And he winds up healing Malchus' ear and restoring him and then being arrested peacefully. And at that moment, all the disciples flee. And so the question is, why did Jesus tell the disciples to get swords? <laughs> I believe that it was all a setup. It was a test. He said, hey, if you don't have a sword, sell your cloak to get a sword. And the disciples say, well, we have two swords here. And Jesus said, well, that's enough. Why did he say that's enough, even though there were 12 disciples or 11 at the time because Judas had already left? Two swords among 11 disciples. What's that going to do? But it was meant to test them because Jesus knew what was coming up. He knew that they were going to be in a situation where they had to decide whether to draw a sword or not. And uh, this is why they even ask him the question. And we find only in John's gospel that the disciple who drew his sword before Jesus had a time to respond was Peter, good old Peter. And this test was whether the disciples were going to engage in earthly battle to establish the kingdom. Remember in the Last Supper, Jesus talked about his kingdom and that, uh, that they will sit at the right and the left hand of God and that they will uh, rule over the 12 tribes of Israel. But he was talking about a spiritual kingdom, not an earthly kingdom. And here was a representative of the high priest, which uh, symbolizes the religious kingdom here on earth, uh, serving the temple and uh, they brought guards with, who were armed, and the disciples had an, uh, um, an opportunity to test themselves to say, are we going to establish God's kingdom through force, through earthly means of violence and warfare, or through another means? And Jesus was testing them to say, do you recognize that my kingdom is not of this world? In fact, he said to them, 
put away your sword because whoever draws their sword by the sword will perish. And later when he talks to Pilate, he said, my kingdom is not of this world, lest my disciples, my followers fight. And so the Bible goes on to say that our battle is not against flesh and blood, but against the spiritual forces of evil and darkness. And the weapons of our, our warfare are not earthly. They're not carnal. They're not made of iron or bullets and guns and things like that. That We're not meant to establish his kingdom by earthly means. It's meant to be by his spirit. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And so uh, Malchus is a symbol of the religious kingdom. And Jesus is saying that this religious kingdom, this kingdom of heaven, is not going to be established through force, through violence, but through submission to the Holy Spirit and allowing his power to work. And again, when he is... He's led to the, the Jewish council and tried, and then they take him to Pilate, and Pilate tests him to, as well and finds no guilt in him and want, actually wants to release him. But all these people are making false accusations against Jesus, and what does Jesus do? He remains silent. He doesn't defend himself. And who does Pilate represent? He symbolizes the political kingdom or spirit. And so in this series of events, Jesus is demonstrating that the church is not meant to engage and battle the religious kingdom, the religious spirit, or the political spirit, uh, or the political kingdom through earthly means. We're not meant to do violence with them, and we're not meant to argue with them, but we're meant to just live according to the spirit, to love. This is not to say that we don't speak, but we preach the gospel, and we serve uh, he even said at the Last Supper that whoever wants to be great must be the servant of all, because the, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over people. They use their authority and the power to subdue people, but not so with you. And so uh, this is a good lesson, especially in this day and age when there are so much heated rhetoric regarding religion, different beliefs, uh, different denominations, uh, different ideologies as well as politics. Uh, which side do you believe in? Which side do you support? And the kingdom of God that he taught his disciples to pray that his kingdom come and his will be done is not going to come about through this battle, through this engagement with the realm of religion and politics. It's going to come through other means. It's going to come through the spirit of God. And when the church is led and empowered by his spirit, the kingdom of God will forcefully advance, and the increase of his government shall know no end. And so I encourage you, take some time and, and ask the Lord about Malchus and what he represents and why his story is in all four Gospels, and what is the lesson that we're meant to learn from this experience and this encounter. And I just bless you to hear from the Lord and to be at peace, even though there's chaos and division going on around us in, in different issues regarding religion and politics, and just be clear and at peace by hearing his voice and being led by his spirit to partner with him to establish his kingdom and his will on earth as it is in heaven.